I've fallen at the first hurdle. Hi, welcome back to my channel and welcome to, is it the second or third book review of 2021? I think we're on the third. Today I wanted to share with you what I thought of Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. The last two books I've read um, have been very high scoring. I mean, we had Shiver at four and a half stars, The Midnight Library at five stars. Those were very tough books to follow. Um, but I had high expectations for this. Um, if you saw my most anticipated books of 2021 video, you would have seen that this was featured. If I think about it, I think why I mainly featured it was because of its adaptation, which is coming to Netflix, I think in December. Um, Brad Pitt is producing it. Julia Roberts and Denzel Washington are starring in it. So I just immediately thought, surely they wouldn't put their names to something that was subpar. It's also a National Book Award nominee and there have been so many people, whether that's critics, whether it's publications, talking about this and raving about it. Bearing in mind this is the first <laughs> book of my 2021 most anticipated reads. I was really thinking this was going to be a four or five star read. I've fallen at the first hurdle, let's be honest. You can probably tell from the thumbnail. I didn't love this and that's to put it lightly. <laughs> so Leave the World Behind is a literary thriller, it's a family drama, and it's basically about a white family, Clay, Amanda, and their two kids, who rent a luxury house in the Hamptons. It's very remote. One evening, a black older couple, Ruth and GH, turn up on their doorstep claiming that the house is there, saying that there's a power outage in New York, all the phone lines are down, internet lines are down, so obviously Clay and Amanda can't check, um, but they've turned up on their doorstep at their own house, apparently, um, claiming refuge, and Clay and Amanda let them in. Within the first chapter, I was not a fan of this author's writing style. He uses so many words that I've never heard of. To be honest, I might have been better reading this on my Kindle when I could look it up immediately. Um, they just felt so unnecessary. And also, the author uses so much sort of crude and vulgar language. It's just not necessary. It feels totally surplus to the story, but it's in there almost to sort of get a reaction. That's just not my thing. But there's also a couple of parts in the book that I just found so strange. So um, early on in the book, when GH and Ruth turn up on um, the doorstep, there's about four pages of inane chat. It doesn't go anywhere. Um, we don't really learn anything. Um, and it just felt so slow, frustratingly slow. And then a bit later on, Amanda goes to the supermarket and there's about two pages just listed of what she bought at the supermarket. It's the strangest thing. I've never read anything kind of written in this way before. Um, and I must say it just, it wasn't for me. The main characters of Clay and Amanda aren't likeable at all. I mean, they're very racist. When the black couple turn up on their doorstep, they immediately think, well, there's no way they can own this luxury home that we've rented. Maybe they work here. Um, Clay is also so sexist, even towards his wife, towards Ruth. Um, and yeah, they're just, they're just not likable whatsoever. I was very tempted to stop reading about 30 pages in, but if you know me, um, I hate to DNF a book. Um, I DNF'd one last year. Um, so I carried on and also it's not a hugely sort of lengthy book. It's only just over sort of 230 pages. So I thought, well, it's not going to take up huge amounts of my time, but hardly anything happens in this book. Towards the back end of the book, you really start to feel the panic um, that the characters are feeling. And then I found myself sort of turning the pages to find out what happened, but nothing happens. <laughs> nothing. And the ending is so ambiguous. Oh my God. I am someone who likes a clear cut ending and this was so far from that. I mean, there were so many questions left unanswered, nothing is explained, nothing is tied up. I actually had to look up spoilers <laughs> for this book on Goodreads and I still didn't get it. I mean, am I missing something somewhere? Um, if you've read this book, please let me know because I just don't get it. I know sometimes endings are left very open and ambiguous by the author for a reason so that as the reader you can kind of make up your own mind on it, 
but I'm just not a massive fan of that. And to be honest, I wouldn't even know what I could take from this. What could I think had happened at the end? Now, again, if you saw my most anticipated 2021 reads video, you would have heard me say that this has sort of been pipped as one of those books that future generations will pick up if they're wanting to understand what it felt to live through the 2020 pandemic. I can't tell you if that's the case for me personally because I did not get the book. Um, I didn't really take anything from this other than a bit of panic. All I would say is that if you're struggling during this time, um, I would maybe leave this one for now because there is that panic in there. There is a little bit of sort of fear and uncertainty that you feel coming through from the characters and this book then may sort of exacerbate is that the word? Those feelings. So I think definitely sort of leave this one for now if you're feeling a bit anxious about the situation that we're in now. So I'm sure you can probably guess this is not a book for me. I am going to score it two stars um, only because the last part of the book I did start to feel that panic come through from the characters and it made me turn the pages sort of a lot quicker but then I was completely disappointed by the ending. I am very keen though to see how it's going to be adapted to film um, because obviously we won't have the issue with the writing style. I wonder whether they'll put those sort of cruder moments in or not. Um, I think personally they're completely surplus to the story but you never know. And also maybe the ending will be a bit clearer. I might have to watch it just to understand what I was missing. Next up is something a lot more lighthearted. So in a couple of weeks time you will see my review of Before I Saw You by Emily Houghton. I will pop a picture in here of the cover. Um, I'm reading it on my Kindle otherwise I would show you. If you watched my last video, um, which was my book haul, I will leave that linked in the description below or at the end of this video, um, or if you're following me on Instagram and you're thinking, hang on a minute, she was asking for uh, recommendations on which Taylor Jenkins read to read, um, whether it would be Evelyn Hugo or Daisy Jones. Yeah. That is right, because I've only been doing a book review every other week and in between I'm trying to do other book content. I'm actually a little bit further ahead in my reading than what I am on YouTube with you guys. So I've actually already read Before I Saw You, which will be the review which is coming in a couple of weeks time. I may do a couple of book reviews back to back, week after week, just to catch you guys up with where I am with my reading. Anyway, I think I've uh, babbled enough. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it the thumbs up. Um, and like I said, if you read it, please let me know what you thought of it and sort of how you interpreted it because I just totally didn't get it. I guess not every book can be a five star read, can it? And if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed but you enjoy book reviews of romance, thrillers, popular fiction, um, historical fiction, book hauls, um, then please press subscribe and come and join us. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you again back here next weekend where I will have another video for you. Have a good week. Take care. Bye.